Hi right, guys, <clears throat> I thought we'd kind of go over color code, capacitors such as these, as well as um, look at once you figure out what the colors are, which this color code also works as well for, it's the same one as used on resistors. But once you figure out what the colors are, then what the heck do you do with that? And we're going to talk about that. And then we're also going to do some other math. I know this is a math video, and it's some people don't like math, but this is not that that hard. So, <clears throat> start out with, um, I wrote something down here. And to help you memorize the color code. And uh, so we start out with some numbers here. Then we have a sentence. Big boys race our young girls, but Violet generally wins. Each letter is highlighted or capitalized. Corresponds with colors. So big, black. Boys, brown. Race, red. Our, Orange, young, yellow, girls, green, but, blue, violet, violet or purple, generally gray, and winds white. Those colors correspond to zero through nine. Now, and being that uh, I, I've seen videos where people talked about, you know, they understand the colors on. Um, or being able to read the value on resistors and I'd show some resistors but I really don't well um, you know the bad thing about resistors are so small now uh, it's kind of hard to see them so let me put that down the white here and see if I can zoom in on it and see if we can Look at that resistor. Maybe a little bit more light. A little too much. Uh, rotate it around here. And Okay, we have first colors gray, red, brown, and then gold. Now the gold's tolerance. Gold is 5%. Silver is 10%, and if there was nothing there, that's 20%. But we have um, the gray and red and brown. So what does that mean? Well, we come to our chart here, and we come down here, we look for gray, gray 8 so gray is 8 and let me zoom back out because you didn't see me do that okay so gray Eight. Red. Come up here. It's two. And then the last digit, the third stripe, is the multiplier. And, and basically, the easiest way to remember that is just the number of zeros after the eight and two. The first two color bands will be actual digits, and you put them in order. And then the third band will always be the number of zeros. So it's brown, so we come up here, brown is one, so it's one zero. You just have one zero. So it's 820 ohm resistor at 5% tolerance. It's a two watt resistor. But I um, figured that uh, the one of the big problems that people had with the on the capacitors was uh, they could figure out the 
you know the colors and know what the numbers there was but they didn't know how to take it from there well first let's look at this now at the very first of the video you know I show this up here so you can pause that and write it down if you want you know big boys race our young girls but Violet generally wins is nice to have it, it, it's easier to remember that the biggest problem you will have is you got three B's that you'll have to deal with but always if you can try to keep it in memory it's black and then brown and then the butt is blue beyond that you can pretty much once you work with it for a while you'll eventually get it memorized but we've got this capacitor here and we've got yellow violet orange now there's two other colors on here there's kind of a and you probably can't hardly even see it it's a grayish band kind of a dark gray uh, that's intended to be black and what that is tolerance and then there's a blue one which is kind of dull that's the voltage we won't worry about the tolerance at this point but we'll just go through the rest of it because tolerance is not that important on capacitors so anyway we got yellow violet and orange so what does that mean well yellow we come down through a chart it's young or yellow is four so the first number is four then violet which is the next one is seven then orange well that's our or orange which is three Four seven three. Well, what does that mean? Is it four hundred seventy three microfarads, or what is it? Well, this is this is the number zero. So another way of looking at that is forty seven thousand, and all capacitors are measured off of picofarads. So it's forty seven thousand picofarads. Now we'll get to that in a minute. How to figure out what that is? but 473 is what we got from the numbers uh, we have a blue band for our voltage and it follows exactly the, the listing so blue which is right here but is blue that's six six hundred volts it's hundreds of volts so this cap is a 47,000 picofarad 600 volt cap also known as a bumblebee by the way bumblebee caps are the ones that have stripes on them black beauties do not have stripes so what do we do with that well again you can pause the video on this and write this stuff down so I wrote out some basic numbers here and then we're gonna kind of change things around a little bit but the first thing I want to show farad capacitance is fairly large and let me kind of zoom in on that so you can kind of see that All right. okay so I have here 1.00 equals one farad or just one is one farad which is one times ten to the zero farad it's a large very large capacitor most of the time you'll be dealing with in radios and TVs is, is microfarads or in, in a lot of cases uh, small decimal fractions of microfarads so and down into the picofarads you'll never see a millifarad hardly at all you won't see it in any electronics anyway not in these radios or TVs and you will not see a farad capacitor it's it's giant in size it's a huge amount of capacitance so one farad just below it we take it down a notch to one millifarad which is one times ten to the minus three which is also zero point zero zero one farads now we go to microfarads, which is 0 
which equals 1 microfarad, 1 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. The next one down is nanofarads, which is 0 0.0000000 zero 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 one farad which equals one nanofarad which equals one times ten to the minus nine farads the smallest for the most part you ever will deal with is picofarads so we go down that notch and that is zero point zero 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 one farad which is one picofarad or one times ten to the minus twelve farads now you see why they use scientific notation trying to keep track of all those zeros is not fun now let's look at this from a different standpoint we're not going to ever deal with a farad or several farad capacitors nor are we going to deal with any millifarad capacitors. We start out somewhere dealing with microfarads. And, you know, electrolytics, you may have, you know, like in All American 5, you may get up to 100, 200 microfarads, 150 microfarads. Some TVs, especially uh, ones that don't have transformers in, could be 150, even 200 microfarad capacitors. You know, some of these are going to be some of the largest ones. You might find in some TVs special um, capacitive filters that could be as high as 1,000 microfarad. Uh, computer power supplies, uh, you could easily find one or 2,000 microfarad capacitors in there. But for the most part, you're going to be dealing with microfarads, and the other one is more or less picofarads. Uh, also, picofarad is the same thing as micro microfarad. So, uh, you know, picofarad also equals micro microfarad. So, you'll a lot of the old schematics you'll see micro microfarad. Now, since we really base off most of our stuff will be based off of microfarads. We're just going to kind of rearrange some numbers and we're going to look at one microfarad equals one million picofarads, which it does. Now, to do this, let's look at the this capacitor we had before. And let's do a little experiment with that and see what we come up with. So that, that came out to 473, which is also the same thing as 47,000 picofarads. Okay? Now, if I put 47,000 here, all right, and I want to convert that to microfarads because that's something more I can understand. When I go order capacitors, I can order that. Uh, I mean, you probably some places type in 47,000 picofarad and they, they would search for it and find it for you. But uh, for the most part, you're going to look more in something a little more common. So, <clears throat> if I assume that we're starting off in a microfarad, then if, if, if I do that, then one microfarad, I can say is we're just starting right here. One. Well, I can put a whole bunch, as many zeros I want past this. Okay? You know, <clears throat> these map to nothing. That's the same thing as just saying one if I want. You know, it doesn't matter. So then one picofarad. By following this and looking at this, is going to be zero point, then zero, 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 one. And that's one picofarad using as a microfarad as my starting point. Now, 
the one thing about decimal points you should always remember if you look at this there's only five zeros here and then a one well it counts us but another way of looking at it is it actually counts as zero on this side because in order for this to be brought up to one microfarad I have to move this one multiply this by something which would be one million to move this all the way across here up to here so that's six places I'm moving it anytime you write a number that has a decimal point you always put zero then your decimal point and then write out the rest of the number so we're going to use this over here now since this is already in picofarads and it's several thousand we will put a zero here that's normally where that one would be so we'll put a zero here then it'll be one one two three four five more zeros before we get to the decimal point so one two three four five then we have the decimal point right here now let's just bring that down since we don't have to care about this because we're going to go now to microfarads we don't care about these zeros we don't really need them we'll just drop down the, the, the 7 the 4 the 0 and 0 microfarad so a 473 or 47,000 picofarad is 0 0.047 microfarad or it's a 0.047 microfarad now let's do some other examples now the reason why I'm doing this is not just that you understand the color codes and what how they're read on these because you'll see them and you'll need maybe you don't have a good schematic or something that gives you real good values or something or whatever reasons maybe you've been working on something that don't have a schematic when you look at this and you go well what is that okay what size is that so but in modern day numbering systems a lot of capacitors anymore are marked just like this 105 630 volts don't worry about the K that's just a um, characteristics letter that deals with the what the dielectric is how it's made you know it's a polyester polypropylene whatever so forth but you'll see 105 or like this one 154 come on focus or say 153 or 102 so let's look at these and we'll, we'll use this these are all based off of um, picofarads so 105 so we got 105 what does that mean well it's 10 the five zeros so I got 10 then we got 1 2 3 4 5 zeros picofarad one, one, two, three, four, five, six. so it's one million picofarads alright so let's put that right here one, two, three, four, five, six. okay there's our 105 see one oh then five zeros one two three four five now let's take this that we had over here we can drop the one put a zero in place of it so we'll t start on that end put a zero in then it's one two three four five zeros back to the decimal point so one two three four five decimal point zero now we just drop this down we don't have to worry about the zeros we don't want to we can just drop the one microfarad we can go ahead and put at least one zero in just to make sure that you understand it's one not ten not some other number 
So 105 or 1 million picofarads or 10 with 5 zeros after it is a 1 microfarad cap. So this is a 1 microfarad cap. We have 154. So let's look at 154. We have 154. So that's, I'll drop down here, that's 1, 5, and 4 zeros. 1, 2, 3, 4. Picofarads. So let's do something with that <clears throat> real quick. Again, we'll pull this down, but we'll just leave that as a zero there. So zero with five more zeros. One, two, three, four, five, decimal point, zero. We won't worry so much about those zeros, just where our numbers start at. So we'll drop the five down, the one down, the point, and that's it. Microfarads. So this is a point one five microfarad. So 154 is a 0.15 microfarad cap. Now how about 153? Well, again, we have, this time it's a 153, and I think you know where this is going, but we'll drop that down here with three zeros. Again, we come back up here, zero where the one is, five more zeros. One, two, three, four, five, decimal point zero, bring her down, five, one, zero, point zero, microfarads. So one, oh, one five three is point oh one five, or zero point oh one five, microfarad cap. Last one I got here is 102. So 102. <clears throat> 102 is 10 with two zeros. Again, picofarads. So come back up. We'll still use this. Again, where this one is, we'll just use a zero, then five more zeros. So we put a zero and five more. One, two, three, four, five, decimal point, zero. Come underneath it. We don't worry about these. So we got one, zero, zero, point, zero. Microfarad. It's a point zero zero microfarad or zero point zero zero. One microfarad is a 102. Now I see the correlation. If it's got a 5 there, a 105 or a 155 or a 225 or anything like that, it's going to be 1 microfarad. If it's 155, it'll be 1.5 microfarad. If it's a 225, it's going to be 2.2 microfarad and so on. If it has a 4 there, then it's whatever these two digits are is going to be point, point 0.15 because it's got a 4, just like in here. If it's got a 3, it's going to be point zero 0.015, just like in this one. And then here with the 2, it's going to be point zero zero 0.001 microfarad for this case. Right here. So anyway, if you use something like this, re remember some of these relationships, and if you base off of one microfarad, and you put your picofarad in here as five zeros, then one, because it's one million picofarads equals one microfarad, you can start working out your problems. But you, you know, if you run into caps like this, or if you run into these caps, use the color code and figure out the numbers, the 473, so 47,000 picofarad cap. All right, now 
This is going to be a long video, so I'm really sorry because I seem to take a long time. Now we're going to bring the board up. We're going to do a little other math, and probably can't have this light. Eh, maybe. Let's see. And. Might raise you up just a little bit to kind of get a better view. Tilt this down just a little bit. Hopefully the light is not doing too much shininess on the board. And we will now work on some other stuff and see where this gets us. The other day something, buddy posted something, and anyway, I seen it, and it got me thinking about this, and let's see here. I guess we'll use red. Hopefully it works. I need to get some new markers. And uh, it deals with Ohm's Law and Watt's Law. So what I wanted to, yeah, I need to clean this thing. What I want to deal with here is I want to look at the two laws and show you different formulas that you can derive from them and how you can derive them. So the two base formulas is Watt's Law, which is P equals I times E. Okay, you can see that. And then the other one is Ohm's Law which equals E equals I times R. Okay, P for power or wattage, I is current, and E is voltage. R is resistance. Now there's all kinds of formulas that are in this. There's actually a dozen formulas. dealing with whatever un, uh, unknown you're trying to find and what knowns you have. So let's look at power a little bit. Now here's one formula. If you know the current and voltage you can find the power. But what if you don't know the current and voltage? Let's say you only know the current and the resistance. Maybe you're trying to figure out uh, what wattage the resistor to put in a circuit. You know the current going through there and you know your resistance, but you don't know what wattage. So how do you figure that out? I mean, you know, you got a resistor, a resistance value, and you got the current, uh, voltage. So let's figure this out. So let's look at this base formula, P, which equals I times E. Well, if I don't know the voltage, but I do know the resistance and the current, I can take and substitute this E with what it equals. Come over here and E equals I times R. So I can put that in here. So that actually then equals this. E equals I times, or I mean P equals I times, and E is I times R. So all I did was substitute the E with what it equals. I times R, and I put it in here. Well, now, that's kind of messy, but I can kind of clean that up. So that actually then equals P equals I times I is I squared times R. So you'll hear a lot of this. I squared R is power, wattage, and it is. So <clears throat> if you know the current, you know the resistance, you can find the wattage. Suppose I don't know the current, but I know the voltage, and I know the resistance. What can I do then? Well, again, we look at this formula. Now, I don't know the current. Well, 
I can get it from here, but I need to rearrange this formula. Well, how do I rearrange this formula? What am I going to do there? What is I equal here? Well, if we look at this, if I divide both sides by R to get rid of the R, then I equals voltage, or E, divided by R. So I equals E divided by R. So, going back to this one, we're going to substitute I with what it equals to get P. So, we bring this in to this formula. So, I have E over R times E. Okay? I just put that in place of the I because that's what I equals. Now, to clean it up a little bit, I can multiply the two E's together because when you're multiplying a fraction with a number, you just multiply the numerators. So that is really nothing more than this. E squared over R. And this one, and this one, and this one is the three formulas for power. Here I know voltage and the current, so I can just multiply them together and get power. Here I only know the resistance and the current going through that resistor, so I can go I squared times R to get power. Here, I only know the voltage across the resistor and the resistance. So then it's E squared over R to get power. And that's your power formulas. And that's how you derive them. You know, you just go from the base formula, P equals I times E. Well, then if you don't know E, you can substitute E with I times R here, get I squared R. If you don't know I, we rearrange the formula to find I, which is basically divided by the resistance. So I equals E over R. I substitute that into the, the I up here. I have E over R times E, which is E squared over R. Now, that's the three base power formulas. Okay, let's look at the three base resist or uh, voltage formulas now. We have one here, E equals I times R. Now, that's fine. What if, what if I don't know R, but I got a wattage? I want to find E. Well, I can come here and look at this formula and rearrange it. So, how do I get E? solved here. Well, I just divide both sides by I. So then I would have E divide both sides by I equals P over I. Just derived from here. Number two. What if I don't know I? But I got power and I got resistance. Well, if you remember back just just a moment ago, we had that power equals E squared over R. So suppose I want to find E, but I don't know why, but I do have the power and the resistance. I have the wattage and the resistance. Well, <clears throat> simple enough. Multiply both sides by R. That will cancel this out. If I put an R over here, and I multiply this side by R. These two cancel out, so I get 
we'll just write it this way, P times R equals E squared. Now, that's fine, but that gives me a square. That's kind of hard, difficult to do. So what do I do? Well, then I square root both sides. Square root this and square root this. When you square root a number that's squared, it just comes out its number. These two cancel. So, basically, then, we have the square root of P times R equals E. I wrote differently. I have E equals the square root of P times R. And there they are. That's your base three formulas for finding voltage. You can find voltage with knowing the current and resistance, standard Ohm's law. You can find the voltage knowing wattage and current. Or you can find the voltage if you know the wattage and resistance. And that's how we derive them. Alright, so we've done power and we've done voltage. So, let's look at current. Okay, we already did one current before. Current, here if we want to find current, we know the resistance and voltage. We divide both sides by R and we have current. So, I equals E over R. Now, what if I know the power and the voltage, but not the current? Well, we can use this formula. Again, we divide both sides by E this time, and we get, we can solve I. So that will be I then equals P divided by E. Now you just simply divide both sides by E, just like you divide both sides by R here. All right, now, what if I know power and resistance? I need to find current. Well, remember back before that power equals I squared R. We had found that and derived it out. Well, in this case, we want to know the current. We know this, we know this. So what do we do? Well, we have to divide, you know, times. We have to divide both sides by R. So we do that. So I have P divided by R equals square root, or equals the square of I, I squared. Well, I, I, I can't work with that, so I take the square root of both sides. Again, the square roots cancel, so then I have the square root of P over R equals I. So I equals square root P divided by R. And there's your three current formulas. Now don't feel bad if you have some troubles with this or anything. It takes some practice and stuff to but the base thing I want you to know is all I need is these two formulas. From that point I can derive anything else I want of all these formulas. So now we've done voltage, current, and power. We have one left. Resistance. Well, first we can open Ohm's law. What does resistance equal? Well, we just we got to get it by itself, so we divide both sides by I. So R will equal E divided by I. Now, there's voltage divided by current gives me resistance. Now, going back to a, a formula that we had, we just showed, where we had P equals I squared times R. If I know the current and I know the wattage, I can find R. Simply by dividing both sides by I squared. So, if I do that, then I have R equals P divided by I squared.
Okay, so one left. If I know the voltage and I know the power, but I don't know the resistance, I want to find resistance. What does that work out to be? Well, remember that we had P equals E squared over R. I want to know R. So, in order to get, I gotta get E squared, or I gotta get R by itself. So, there's various ways of doing this, but it's kind of long, anyways, long drawn out. But basically, I'm going to multiply both sides by R to start with. So, I have this. So now, P times R equals E squared. But the only thing I'm caring about is R. So now I've got to divide by P. So I divide both sides by P. So then R equals E squared over P. So come over here. R equals E squared over P. That's your three formulas for resistance. So, we have went through three formulas for power, we went through three vol formulas for voltage, we went through three formulas for current, and three formulas for resistance, a dozen in total, that all came from this, these two right here, and their relationship to each other. That's how you derive them out. This is Watt's Law the power formula and Ohm's law. But from those you can get everything that I had went through this and you can go over this video several times to get used to it. But you can also find charts online for this uh, and stuff. And in fact um, art Hollingsworth, um, he, he put one on and on Google Plus underneath his um, um, new site and um, so you can, you know, if you're friends with him or whatever, you've already seen him post it and uh, And you can look it up. Um, yeah, underneath the beginner's radio workbench. <laughs> Sorry, Art, I had to look it up. Uh, anyway, that's his new, uh, newer site that he's using now, his new YouTube site and everything. But he, he put the chart up, and I'll show it to you. And it's on Google+. Plus. So if you look up Art or look up the beginner's radio workbench, bench um, you will be able to see this right there and that is the beginners radio workbench so same formulas we just went through and we derived from this formula and this formula. These are the two base formulas. I get E over, over PI, E equals square root of PR, P times R, and so on. All the way through all these. So anyway, I wanted to show that plus the capacitors and stuff and um, I don't know exactly when this video will get it up. Uh, probably in a day or two. Uh, I'll probably do the 
uh, another video on the Admiral first and get it up first and then put this video up after that uh, hopefully uh, we'll see so I'll leave you with that and uh, you can watch the video several times if you like these videos uh, then give it a big thumbs up and if you're new first time seeing me and I do videos that deal with math theory uh, electronics theory old tube mostly as well as uh, tube radio and TV restorations and and the like so if you like those kind of videos then uh, go ahead and subscribe so thanks again for watching guys I'll see you on the next video